Today we're working on the front bumper balance. When I use my jack handle, the bumper has a lot of play in it. Okay? Which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but I don't like it. The goal for this video is to make this bumper a lot more, or balance, a lot more um, sturdy and a lot more tight to the front bumper itself. So I'm actually gonna pull the bumper off for this. All right, so here we are. This is the back side of the bumper, as you can see. And you probably know from previous videos that I've made, I kind of just attached this with like random bolts in random places that seem to make sense. So I even put wing nuts on this one for some reason, I don't know. It's weird what you do when you're younger. You just kind of do what makes sense. Because you get old, you're like, why the heck did I do that stuff? And right now, the way it sits right now, you can kind of see the gap that I'm talking about right here. Um, let's see. Actually, this works right here. This is the gap between the bumper. Like I said, it doesn't, you can't even see it for the most part, right? Because the truck sits so low. But I, I know it's there and it bothers me. So that's why we need to change it. GM's part, right? What's interesting is if you look at the assembly, there's no hardware, really. I mean, there's a couple, probably, a couple bolts that go in there, but nothing really concrete, right? So I've gone ahead and played with it off camera. And what I did basically was just install my two self tappers in each corner to kind of get it where I originally had it. And then I wanted to realign basically the corners is what I'm going off of here. I got one, each of them are pretty close. There's that little gap, unfortunately. It's just the flaw of these, this type of material. So I cut out a piece of flat bar stock that I'm going to clamp to the back side here and cut it out so it sits inside of this little cutout. Using spray paint, we painted it to get the perfect outline. We're trying to match our cuts so we make less cuts. That's one way of working smarter. So here's our roughed out piece. She's pretty, she's looking good. All right, so the next step we wanna do is have a way for this to connect to the whole bumper. So there's a couple ways to do this. You could weld it, I'm sure it would work just fine, uh, but it still wouldn't solve the whole issue of needing to bolt stuff in. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do it a little differently. What I'm gonna do is just drill some holes in this plate, lay it on top and just plug weld the thing. That way we can use our existing holes here and here to, I believe, to match to the bumper. So for right now, I'm gonna play with it for a little bit and see where I can come up with. So we got our bracket here welded. Here's our penetration marks. We've got the plugs grounded down. And there it goes. That's how it's gonna sit in here, just like that. So it seems kind of like overkill, but I feel like this is the best way to secure this bracket. The nice thing about this is that we're going to be able to use the existing holes, like I was saying before, where we'll be able to just drill through it and not make any new holes. But this is also giving us the structural capability that we're looking for. Jesus. All right, so we're gonna install the bracket backwards so you can see how it goes. Bracket goes in. One just two by four for now. You don't have to worry about this because we're looking at it from the upside down view, so. Then bumper goes in. More on top. So we went out to Home Depot and bought this piece of flat bar, it's just aluminum. And the idea was to just set it here. But obviously we need to make this round a little more for it to work. So we're gonna try something. All 
right, here's our curvy piece of uh, aluminum. I don't know if that's coming along that good. Try to give you perspective. Here's something straight. As you can see, we really captured that angle, which isn't much. You know, we weren't really going for much, right? And now, here, this is a lot better than before, where we can get our, uh, our groove on, get this bolted up nice and pretty. I've been called a lot of things before, but being stupid isn't one of them. Here's what I came up with. The problem is, I would like to drill a hole here, but I can't get to it from here because of the angle of the bumper. And this is just really not that feasible with the drill. It puts me like right here. So, I have a 3 8 extension with a quarter inch socket which happens to accept the drivers and I have my impact with a half inch to three eighths reducer and now I can drill exactly where I want how hilarious is that I'm gonna do some sketchy shit do da do da I'm gonna do some sketchy shit. Oh, do 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 do. Hey, just stop moving. Woo! Nice. Really wish I thought about this earlier when I was drilling another hole. <laughs> All right, so I feel like this will definitely support the front bumper balance a hell of a lot better than I ever could and I think it's safe to say that I can just realign this hole here drill a new hole here in this balance to make up for the offset so I'll do that off camera and then we're going to focus on the last support which is down here focus number seven is what we're trying to make um there's a bunch of ways to do this if you really wanted to we could probably get some like threaded rod and just run it straight up. We could totally do that and that would work just fine. That's an easier method. You know, you can see it, it would work for both directions on just about. I mean, you might have a little rubbing here. But we're going to do a little different. I just feel like trying it this way anyways. Uh, we got some round bar here. This is a 3 8 by 48 inches. And we're going to do like a little bit of ghetto blacksmithing. So we're going to start by heating this up and flattening out and then making a bend. Just like that, lady and gentlemen, we are completely done with multiple points. This is probably way overkill. But I think it's better than anything the factory ever did or uh, anything I had before. So we have contacts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we have the self tappers and head right here in this corner so it's safe to say that um this thing hits anything it's gonna it's gonna make it <laughs> uh i don't foresee us having any future issues but i guess if we wanted to we could make a similar setup 
down, but I mean, you have to really be expecting to hit something, right? So we're gonna clean all this up, paint everything, and then we'll do a real assembly. Safe to say we definitely closed the gap on this one. Pretty happy with it. It's also nice to know if that if I ever hit something with this, more than likely it ain't going anywhere. Well let me know what you guys think on this. If I did a good job, bad job. What would you do differently? Or what would you do similarly? You know, I want to hear your guys input on this, please. Thanks for watching.